Hey guys, welcome to the fourth tutorial in this series. Uh, this one is going to be all about getting the enemy attacks working and also the typing. I'm going to get uh, the groundwork on enemy attacks done right away, but it won't take long. And then we're going to do the typing, then come back to enemy attacks. So first thing you want to do is work out how you want your enemy attacks to actually function. I've been having a little bit of a think about it, and I think the best bet for us might be to use a timer. So just search timer in your toolbox, drag one onto the screen, and it should come up down the bottom here because it's an invisible component. So what I'm going to do right away is just make timer and attack is the name I'm going to give it. I'm going to set it to 2000 milliseconds, so two seconds, and I'm going to leave enabled as false. The way we're going to use it is every time we click one of our buttons to make an attack, our attack's going to happen, and then the timer will start. Once it hits two seconds, the timer will stop again, and it will run whatever code we have in the timer. So every two seconds after our attack, that's when the enemy will have their attack, and then it will be our turn again. I think two seconds is about good enough time for that to happen. I think it's a good amount of time to wait to make it seem pretty good, but not so long that it you're waiting on them. So I feel like that should work out pretty nicely for us. What we're going to do is we're just going to double click on our timer down here and that'll create the click event in our code. That's the basic core stuff for our enemy attacks. There's some things I want to fix up with our um with our character class at the moment and that's going to be and that's going to include fixing up the type uh, management. I've realized that we shouldn't be using an integer for attack and defense because if we're using them in this way down here, then it won't let us actually get the double result that we want. So we are just going to have to change these to doubles. So I'm just going to double click on that, paste it there and there. And I'm also going to need to paste it here because that's we're getting a double then as well. Okay. It's a minor fix, but it definitely helps. So the other thing we're going to do is we're going to restructure this a little bit here. So at the moment we've got our, at the moment we've got our critical hit modifier there, but we're going to add another modifier onto this in a second. We're going to add the type modifier. So the more and more you get of these, it becomes way easier just to, do it a different way. So I'm going to just say crit mod. Ah, uh, going to create a double called crit mod, and I'm going to set it to one, and a double for type mod, which will also be set to one. I'm going to copy this from here, and then at the end of our after we've rolled for accuracy, I'm going to just go type, I mean, well, I'm going to have my regular equation times by the critical hit modifier and then times by the type modifier. So when those are one, they won't do anything. When crit mod is 1.5 though, because they will have rolled a natural 20. If they get a critical hit, we're going to make the critical hit modifier 1.5. If they don't, then it's going to stay 1, and it's going to be normal. Similar thing we're going to do with the type modifier. I am going to... Okay, let's write it out first, before I go and copy and paste my code. So, so I already know my type. It's listed under type here. So I'm going to say, if my type equals water, for example, and I'm going to need to get the enemy type as well. So I'm going to get a string from the call of this method, and I'm going to call it n type, and n type equals fire, and I'm going to need to make sure that these are exactly correct, otherwise it won't work. Then I'm going to make my hype mod equal to 1.5. That's actually the wrong way around, I just realized. So 
if I'm water and they're fire, then that's a weak against. They're weak against me. I am going to swap those a little bit because that doesn't make the most sense for me logically. Okay, if the enemy's attacking me with fire and I'm water, then it's 0 0.5. Else if. Else if they're attacking me with water and I'm fire, then they're going to get a type modifier of 1.5. Okay, I'm going to hit Control K D. That's going to fix up the formatting a little bit. And you'll notice here that that only works if, you know, it's the exact right typing. That only works pretty much if I'm Squirtle and they're Charmander. So we are going to need to duplicate this a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bracket there and then I'm going to hit the straight up lines, which is the or symbol. And then I'm just going to copy paste that a couple times and then close that off. So if they're water and I'm fire or they are fire and I am grass or they are grass and I am water. Then they're going to get a type modifier of that. And similar. So those are the six possible combinations you can get for a 3x3 three three type matchup. You will notice that if you're the same type, then none of those will apply. And you will just have a type modifier of 1, which means it will not be changed at all. Remember, if you feel like any of this is unbalanced, you can change these. So if you feel like the types are affecting the game too much, you can make that 0 0.8 and 1.2. And that'll bring it down a little bit. It'll make it a little interesting, but not as unbalanced. Okay, so that's our type modifier done. The reason I did this before I did the actual enemy attack was because we need to go back and add another thing to here. So we need to get the player's type. So now we need to not just get the attacker's attack stat, we also need to get the attacker's type. If you want to do types of different moves, so have a normal attack for example and then have a fire attack for Charmander, something like tackle and ember as is the case usually, you can easily do that. You can just swap that out for just, you can say, normal, which won't attack any, which won't change anything, and then fire for that one. But you'll need to code it a bit differently. Okay. Let's do the enemy's attack. We want it to attack after we do. So, I'm going to say, when we click our buttons, we're going to enable that timer. Oh, timer.enable equals true. And we're going to paste that there as well. There is one other thing that we need to do to make sure that this is actually fair. Because at the moment, I can actually spam the attack button and get quite a few hits in before the timer ticks over enough. So what I'm also going to say here is after we click our button, not only are we going to start that timer, we are also going to say that button attack one enabled is going to be false. And that is going to be the same for our button attack two and our button end. And remember, you need to make sure you put it on all of those buttons. We haven't done anything with that defend button yet, so we're just going to need to remember to copy and paste those four lines onto that when we make it. Okay. So, next thing, once we do start our timer, it's going to wait two seconds, and then we're also going to just disable our timer. Okay. 
So now that we've hit our timer, we don't want it to happen every two seconds, only the two seconds after we've tapped, only once. So we're just going to start it and then stop it once it's ticked. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to make ourselves take damage. So, so I'm just going to take this basic one up here, just going to copy that, and instead of the enemy taking damage, the player is going to take damage. And that will be using the enemy's attack stat and the enemy's type. Okay. This is just going to be a very quick proof of concept, and then I'm going to make it more interesting in a second. We also need to get our HP checker stuff. So, if the player's HP is greater than zero, and the progress bar for the player da, da, da. you're getting the picture anytime we have the word enemy we're just going to replace it with player if we've been consistent then that won't be too difficult okay so two seconds after i attack i'm gonna take damage from the enemy and they're going to update my progress bar accordingly okay there is one more thing we need to add before we test the game so i have disabled all my buttons we need to make sure we enable them again otherwise they'll be real awkward okay let's do it Whoa, big hit. Small hit. Yeah, I think our type matchup might be a bit extreme, but you can see it's working. It's very extreme. Okay. So let's quickly tweak that type matchup. I am going to go with 0.8 and 1.2. That will be a bit more balanced. And I'm going to do one more thing up here. So from the last one, when we load our screen, we are going to make label player name is going to equal player dot name, label player name dot text rather. And you can see where this is going. Label enemy name, label enemy dot text equals enemy dot name and I'm not very accurate with my keyboard at the moment okay that's right so that should fix itself up every time now lovely okay let's keep working on our enemies attacks so right now we are getting it to do one attack we want to make it a little more interesting than that so let's go with a random number generator once again Random R&D equals new random. Okay. And then I'm going to have an integer called roll again. I'm going to set to be R&D dot next. And I'm only going to give it three options at the moment. I'm going to make it range from one to four, which means one to three, because four doesn't count. Okay. If roll is equal to one, then we are going to do this attack. Else if roll is equal to two, then we are going to paste that there and do the 20 damage, 11 accuracy attack. And then right now we are going to also put in else. So if it's three, essentially, I'm just being lazy then it's going to be the defend one that we haven't written yet. That's going to be the next tutorial. Okay. So, no matter what happens there, I'm going to hit Control KD, space everything out nicely, and that's going to do either a small, high accuracy shot at us, or a medium, medium accuracy shot. And there's a chance that they'll defend, but defending doesn't do anything for us yet, so... We're going to write that in properly later. 
Perfect. I think that's about it. Let's give it another test. Make sure it all works. Lovely. It's Bulbasaur, Squirtle. The names match up nicely now. So that's good. I'm going to hit attack one. He's going to take some damage. He's going to defend apparently, but not very well. He's hitting me. Good. Looks like I missed. I missed again. Oh, that was a big hit. And he hit me. Okay. So, I feel like this still feels a bit unbalanced, but that's mostly because half of those times he was trying to defend when we haven't ridden it properly yet. Okay, guys. So, I am going to leave that there. Next time, we're going to wrap up some things. We're going to put in that defend capability, and we're going to make some information pop up when things happen. Uh, there's also a couple things that I want to fix up as well, like our exit button doesn't work. Um, and also, you'll find that the Pokemon aren't quite facing each other the right way most of the time. So, I'm going to fix all of that up, maybe in a final tutorial after that one. Just a lot of tweaks and things like that that we can really tidy up that makes a big difference to how the game feels. So, let's see how we go. We'll get to it eventually. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.